This girl, I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit If it moves, gotta grab it, fuse like a magnet Lose, won't have it, till I'm doomed in a casket I ain't playing, got a weird mind If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine If the shit tastes sour, you should taste mine I'ma stay in power for a long time Get up, nah, I ain't a quitter Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter Big picture, I'm a straight killer Rice in the song to the highest bidder Got juice, got gas, I'ma move fast New shoes, new tracks, like who's that? I'm new, come back, better than last Yeah, it's a new me, never gonna look back You're never gonna look back Cause damn, I was built to last You move slow and I move fast And that's facts Only I can make a change Slowly take a step today I will never be the same Cause that's what it takes Let me get this screen off of here Alright, welcome guys Happy Tuesday, April 9th Grab your popcorn Grab your beer we're going to hang out for a little bit and just chat with you. We got mediocre in the house. I got a couple of other folks invited and uh, we'll just see who all shows up. Shoot me a DM if you're one of our regular guests and you'd like to stop in. And without further ado, let's get mediocre in here. Mediocre, my friend, how are you doing? Cheers, brother. Hang on, mediocre. Uh, I'm going to let you say hello to some folks. The wife just got home. What's up, everybody? What's up, Manuel? Matt, what's going on? David? What's cracking? Monkey Tamer. <laughs> That's funny. I like it. Oh, boy. Who else we got? How's everybody doing tonight? I hope we're having a good night. All right, I'm back. How are you? I'm doing swell. I'm starving, so I'm working on working on uh, getting my supply of popcorn uh, eaten. You know, the pantry's loaded up, and we didn't didn't have a movie today. After all, I thought I was going to go to one. Things came up, so uh, we'll we'll do that later this week. I want to go see what's that uh, the monkey movie out right now? Monkey Man. Monkey Man. Yeah, I saw uh, Civil War. Fantastic movie. You guys are going to love that. Go see it in freaking IMAX because the sound is going to blow you away. Yes, babe, Monday. I asked you last week if you were working Monday. It was a special premiere. She's like, we'll go see it again. Don't worry. Tony, give me one <laughs> second. I got to set that up real quick, all right? All right. Who is that? Smooth Operator, how you doing? David, David H, David M, Matt, what's going on, guys? Sorry, we just threw this together at the last minute. Um, I just dropped a video from CinemaCon. If you guys haven't seen it, go check that out. Kind of interesting news, kind of interesting news. Adam Aaron saying that uh, Chapter 11 is inconceivable for AMC. That's a pretty bold statement, pretty bold statement. And I don't think that executive, I don't think that they say those kind of things in public just off the cuff, just my opinion. They, they can get away with a lot, but, uh, you know, with forward looking statements and they, they always have the right to change their mind if circumstances change, but what he sees right now. I think he's trying to calm the waters that, uh, you know, all these people running around yapping their mouth on social media, AMC's going bankrupt, blah, blah, blah. You're, you're not going to go bankrupt with nearly a billion dollars in the bank. That's just dumb. Not this year, anyways. Uh, things that have to be really bad all the way for the rest of this year and uh, a, another year, and they'd have to blow through all of the potential additional equity raises they could do and the price would have to be smash down to pennies. So uh, if Q2 is good, Q3 and Q4 are better, then we move into a 2025. They should have enough cash. He apparently feels confident enough to make a statement like that. 
I'm uh, I'm curious what you guys think. I know there's going to be a lot of people mad that I even dared to make a video. Uh, it's funny. I, I past couple of days I make a video reading an article. Oh, you're pumping AMC. You dips. You dips. I'm reading an article. Go squawk at the reporter. Don't squawk at me. I don't want to hear it. My job on YouTube is to report the news of things I find interesting. I found that interesting. Y'all can go suck it if you don't like I, it. I found it interesting <laughs> too, Tony, to be honest. I said, oh, man, isn't that crazy? I wasn't expecting him to say anything like that now, were you? I was not expecting that. David asked, is that AMC popcorn? It is. In fact, it's got extra butter leaked out the top of the bag, David. Well, I've tried the low salt, the regular, and the extra butter. And the extra butter comes with butter packets that you pour over the top. Butter, you know, butter AMC flavored. Special butter. Yeah, the <laughs> special butter. I don't want to know what it is, but uh, because i am got my keyboard and stuff here, I didn't pour the extra greasy stuff on top. This is just the straight out of the bag. And the other thing I like to do with this is pour it in a bowl and put a couple of drops of truffle oil and some Parmesan cheese on there. Some real Parmesan. Woo, that yeah, is good, good stuff. stuff. That is some good damn stuff. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I got what do you think up. about the article, Mediocre? I, I, I like the article, um, you know, but I have to change my trading strategy. Again. So let's talk about trading strategy because... Guys, we have a group on Discord where we set up our trades on Monday. We confer with the latest DD, the charts, the uh, what's going on in the economy. We're not just one of these guys that looks at a chart, predicts an algo, and then sets our trades. We are doing real DD, including all the hours I put in every day, uh, trying to understand what the company is going to do. But, you know, mediocre he likes to look at the charts. I like to look at the filings and figure out what the execs are going to do. I like the economics and looking at the macro market. We have other guys that are options specialists that they love options. We're all kind of generalists at everything, but we each have our own little specialty. So let's talk mediocre about the trades we've been doing this week. I'll let you, I'll let you go for a bit for a minute. Yeah. So this week uh, we'll, we, we kind of did a combination of, of uh, a couple things, right? Uh, we, we hold shares on top of uh, we want to buy shares too, but we want to buy shares at a, at a cheaper price, right? So on the shares we own, I at least I did, um, I sold some uh, $3 call options, which means that if we close above 3 bucks, I lose my shares, which is fine. I'm okay with that as long as the price stays around $3. I'll just – Buy my shares back the next Monday or whatever. But for the folks that are joining in, why would you sell three dollar covered calls on shares that you own in your portfolio? What's the reason that you would do that? Because for people that are not options traders. All right. So the reason why I would do that this week specifically is because I know that dilution is not over. So Adam, Aaron, and uh, AMC has a lot of shares that they need to sell into the market, right? And I don't suspect them of being done yet. So, And we, and we don't suspect they will be done this week. Exactly. So that is uh, going to hold the price down. And armed with that information, I think if I sell my shares at $3, I collect a premium on that. For example, I got $0.11 cents a share. Now, uh, mediocre, you're just trading pennies. Pennies, yeah. How <laughs> I many... <laughs> Tony knows I got a lot of shares, don't I? Tony? Yeah, let, let's put it this way, guys. If you are thinking pennies <laughs> when you hear us talk about nine cents a share, first of all, you got to realize whether it's nine pennies, sometimes options we're trading are 18, 25, 45 pennies. That's times 100 shares. So you're talking $9, $25, $45, then times the thousands of shares that, for example, Mediocre has. Uh, I know these guys sometimes are making a thousand dollars a week so you can take your pennies your little penny talk and stuff it right up your ooh, ooh. 
<laughs> because you don't know anybody who's yapping about mediocre pennies obviously does not know how to trade options or uh, what you can make when you have a decent amount of shares. So just yeah, putting it in context for the, for the dummies out there. So, so I can uh, say I made 11 cents a share and I got a lot of shares. It's a lot of money. And, and that allows me to buy more shares. So I take that premium, roll it right back into the stock, have a good day. Right. And I know people don't, some AMC shareholders don't like that, whatever, but it's my account. That's how I choose to trade it. I'm a trader for one. And uh, you're not going to affect the price this week anyways, mediocre, because we know AMC is suppressing the price with dilution. Not, exactly. not intentionally. They're trying to raise money. And we've already done the math that it's not likely to go over three bucks because every time it does, they're going to sell into that. So exactly. If, the it, thesis if it goes was, near 310, 312, believe me, you do. Volume's going to come and push it back down. So there's that. And so with some of the premium I took, I turned around and I sold uh, some put options. The reason I would sell put options is because I got 12 cents a share. It was It was interesting this week because the calls and the puts were divided right down the middle, even money on both sides. So, and that allows me to buy shares cheaper than $3, right? If you're going to buy a lot of shares, you can buy them less than $3. You're going to get 11 cents. Think about it. That's, uh, what's that, $2.89 uh, a share? Mediocre. We got a, we got a couple of numbskulls over there, the, the little hate squawkers that don't, they say they understand options. But they, they get confused when you and I talk about selling put options or when I talked about hedging my shares with puts. Oh, Tony seems pretty proud of his puts. Guys, I, I've been holding shares, been holding shares. And as I told you last week, I expected a dilution announcement. So to protect the shares I was holding, you do what's called hedging buy a put option in case the share price erodes, your uh, put option protects you. So uh, my shares were down. The ones that I, I, I sold the bulk of my shares right before the dilution, the day before, per DD that I disclosed in Discord to all of these guys in our trading group. I did that. Not all of them did it. They didn't all, you know, believe my DD to the same extent. So everybody did something different. But... I sold most of my shares. I kept some and the ones that I kept, I hedged with a $4 strike January puts. That's a hedging technique, a protection. Uh, my shares were down 30%, which is what I expected. And uh, my put options were up about 34%. So uh, that completely protected my position. And I did close those out. I, I bought them back or let's see. I, I bought put, so I sold them to close because I don't really, I don't see the price going uh, much lower than where it's at. I could be wrong, but I went ahead and collected that uh, income. I don't know. So, you think you're wrong with that article? <laughs> I don't know. That, that, that's buying <laughs> that. I bought puts. I'm out of that trade now. Mediocre is talking about selling cash secured puts, which is our way to earn premium from options and get an entry to buy shares. So when you hear us talking about selling puts, we are doing it with the intent to buy shares. Exactly. It's a so bullish. Walk, walk, them, walk, a walk, bullish them through the, walk them through your example, mediocre. You sold so, $3 puts. I sold $3 puts. So I sold $3 calls and I sold $3 puts. The reason I would do something like that is, just to collect a premium because I believe the stock price is going to trade at $3. It's going to close, you know, $301, $3, $2 .99, somewhere around there, right? That, that's what I believe. That's what what I'm thinking for this week. With that said, so, though. So you get, sorry, to, you get to, you sold the puts, you get to collect and keep the premium right away. Yep. If it closes above $3 on Friday, you don't buy any shares. You just get to keep the money from the options. If it closes, if it, up, if it closes at two ninety five, then what? You sold the puts for say fifteen cents. So if I if it closes at two ninety five, I get the shares that I sold the puts on, right? You, have, have to buy you would be up. you would be 
exercise and you'd be forced to buy the shares correct at three dollars a hundred shares times however many contracts you sold correct and so if it closes above three dollars though i lose the shares that i sold contracts again well let's not but, let's not confuse the covered the calls let's just talk about the puts for a second i want to make sure people silo this information and understand the strategies all right perfect you so, sold the three dollar puts you collected correct. say fifteen dollars premium per contract if yep. it closes at 295 you will be assigned 100 shares per contract at three bucks correct but you made 15 bucks so your basis is actually two dollars and 85 cents even though your broker is going to buy you in at three dollars absolutely so that's the that's the benefit guys if you're i'm trying to explain this multiple times slowly just for those that are not used to options trading when you're selling cash secured puts and you're okay buying at the strike price i think uh i was selling them also at uh, 16 and 18 cents so my basis if i get assigned on friday which i'm fine i'd love to buy it under three bucks i already have been buying with cash under three bucks i'm fine to take more but my basis because of the premium i collected on selling the puts will be if i get assigned on those shares i'll be buying them and i'll have a a, a cost basis of like 282 two dollars and 82 cents i love that <laughs> gotta love it you gotta love it yeah it's uh so don't it's a don't take our strategies as being bearish we're trying to explain to you the strategy of what we're doing to uh get an entry and maintain as low a basis as possible that's right and that article changes things because the article to me is a bullish article right what's that going to do to the stock price is it going to create more buying pressure right is is that going to happen are we going to trade above three dollars now like you know 305 whatever wherever whatever we trade at that's going to affect what i what i have to do i can't so next week i can't sell a three dollar call option because if it's trading at 305 to 310 or something like that it puts more risk at, at me losing my shares if if when AMC is done with their dilution and the stock price rises to say 345, you know, then so I lost. If we're, if we're right that this uh, quote from Adam Aaron, chapter 11, inconceivable is meaningful. Like I'm not big on decoding tweets, mediocre. Yeah, me either. I'm not big on decoding tweets. In fact, I've made fun of people that do it, but I, you know, I don't give them a hard, I don't give them a hard time because most of them mean well and it's entertaining Sometimes I find it funny. I never would make any investing decisions off of any CEO's tweets. However, that being said, when he's talking to a reporter and he says chapter 11 is inconceivable, I don't think you say something like that by accident. I think oh, it really? means to me that the, the debt renegotiation is likely either done or well on its way to being done. And, uh, and so now we're kind of thinking if that's the case, if, if that's yeah. the case, what does that mean to our trading strategy? What does that mean to the stock price? And so that's what we've been talking about all night. Like uh, we have certain options plays and we have shares under three bucks. Some people in our group have shares over three bucks. Uh, what, what's going to happen to the price? So I think we're thinking what mediocre it, when the debt restructuring, well, it depends on how the debt restructuring goes. But if we just forget about that for a second and say that uh, Adam Aaron meant something when he said that, you would think that it could be possibly bullish. But I also think that the dilution might not quite be done yet, and that would suppress any bullish momentum. So how do you how do you weigh that trade off? I mean, so for me the only thing that I could do is just adjust my trading strategy a little bit. So like I won't sell options closer to the money. I'll have to move my strike farther out, um, take less premium, you know, protect my position. That move way. your strike price higher. Correct. Yep. And I'll, and I'll just stop selling uh, puts, you know, it's, it's easier. Like if I'm, if I'm trying to accumulate, depends what you're trying to do. 
if I'm trying to accumulate, which, which is what I've been doing is accumulating. But so if you want to continue accumulating, you, you could sell puts uh, and hope that you get, get exercised on, right? You hope that, that you end up with the shares at the end of the week, but there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. You might just end up with the, the premium, which is nice. It's, it's money. It depends on your strategy. Sometimes it's just easier to buy shares at the market, right? So we're, I just got to look at it, see what we're going to do. Yeah, we're, I mean, don't, don't get this twisted guys. We're taking some risk and I don't, I'm not giving anybody trading advice. I'm just always trying to tell you what we're doing. Cause I didn't do a lot of options trading in, on my AMC position in 2021, 2022, 2023. I did not do any of these strategies that I'm talking to you about. The only thing I ever did uh, right before earnings a couple times was I just bought naked calls like, like you guys do. You know, you expect a pop, you buy some call options, you make some money. And then the price of the stock always comes back down like it always did. But uh, all these other strategies, you know, as AMC got into this running out of cash and we knew that the price was going to come down due to dilution uh, and we still love the company. We'd like to see it succeed. We don't want to just walk away. How do we uh, stay in the play, have fun with it? We understand the heck out of this company and how it trades. How do we do that the most profitable way possible? Uh, knowing the headwinds that the company was going to face in 2024. So we had to alter our strategy. Now, there are people in our group that, for example, uh, one gentleman has a, a a buttload of GameStop shares, and he's been doing this strategy for years, making a ton of money uh, selling covered calls. And I don't know if he's I don't know if he's selling cash secured puts, but I know he's been selling covered calls on his GameStop position. He told he's, he told me, Tony, it's one of the highest volatility, highest IV plays out there. And the, the premiums on it have been insane until the last week. The, the premiums on GameStop just eroded to almost nothing. Uh, as, as the market is finally got a peak at what, GameStop's earnings are, there's no more volatility in GameStop. Everybody except a couple people knows it's going down. So the IV really dropped. Although I did see Larry Ching bought 10,000 shares today. So they'll, they'll try and rally it tomorrow. Really what we want to see is not executives buying a couple thousand shares. We need to see a, a strategic change in the business. Put that capital to use. Put the capital to use. All right. Uh, mediocre. Uh, we were talking, getting back on t subject. We were talking about how the, the news from Adam might meaningfully change, affect the price or our, how we're, how we're accumulating the stock. And we're not, we're not bearish guys. Like we acknowledge there's risk. I want to be very clear to all the bears that are watching. We acknowledge the risk. We look at the damn financials every day. We, I read, through them multiple times every quarter when they come out. Yeah, we talk about it all the time. It's just we're, we're, we are not and never have been hopium pushers, uh, but we we do think that you know ultimately if the box office grows enough, this company can avoid bankruptcy, and that there are some people that are counting it out too early. Will we be right? I don't know. We're not going to know for a year or two. Yeah. It's still a risky speculative play as long as the company is losing money. But I think we're we're close to turning the corner on that, you know, by the end of this year. We'll see. So I just want to get that out of the way. We are, uh, we own the stock. We're trading the stock, uh, but we're not, we're not oblivious to the risk. So always do your own due diligence, read the financial statements, and uh, watch this channel for some real talk. I mean, uh, I am surprised by the quote, you know, that was made in the article that, uh, you know, that that's interesting the way the way it's worded. So if, if that is what he said and it was quoted, I mean, it gives me an answer that I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, to just chill out. I think I'm good at this point, you know. Makes me, 
I feel more relaxed, right? I'll feel a little better about my position than I did before, but I, I have to protect my position, uh, which I do constantly, right? And I'm always looking at what is going to affect my my money. My money is what is important. So that's the way I look at it. Do you want to read uh, Sparky's comment there and see if you have any uh, response to it, Mediocre? Yeah, so uh, he says if it's two ninety five at the close and you don't want to buy the shares, you likely can buy the $3 puts back at 5 or $0.06 cents a couple minutes before close. Uh, make your $0.10, cents, sell the other put again. He, he is correct. You can always buy back what you sold. If you don't want the shares, you don't have to buy the shares, right? Uh, just, you know, buy, buy the contract back and take the premium, right, if you want to keep the money. That, that is true. Um, Matt says, how long do you see the round of dilution lasting? Let me bring up my spreadsheet, Matt. That is a great question. And again, this spreadsheet is just my best guess. Like we got to start somewhere, right? We can't just be out in the wind uh, listening to random YouTubers telling us it's going to take a year and AMC wants to sell them all at $4 a share. I mean, that is a possibility. It is a possibility. It could take a year and they won't sell them less than four bucks. That could happen. I don't think that is the case, though. So I am modeling a couple of different scenarios, and I've been sharing that with you guys. Let me pull up the spreadsheet, and I'll put it on screen for you. Let me move it down to a monitor down here. Uh, again, this is just what we're looking at, our best guess. These are actually two scenarios from recent dilutions. Scenario one uh, is the November dilution, and scenario two is actually more like the, the September dilution. Scenario one would be they just basically sell 10% of the volume every day as AMC selling. So if the volume was $44 million, AMC sold $4.4 million. And it, uh, if that were the case... Let's see, uh, this is row 17. I need to just update this. If that were the case, then they are 58 million into the dilution. Now, mediocre, I'm the cowboy rodeo. This is my scenario. The monkey tamer here, mediocre, said, Tony, why don't you model if they sold heavy into the first two days when the volume was over 40 million. And I said, that's a good idea. And I actually went and looked at the September dilution and that is exactly what they did. How do I know that? By looking at how long it took and the average price that they sold versus the price on the chart. I could tell that they, they front loaded shares on uh, the first couple days. So that's what we assumed here that the first couple days they front loaded at a higher price, more shares. And we just picked 50% of the volume. We, you got to start somewhere. So in that case, they're almost done. $182 million raised. And they will be done by the end of this month. In fact, uh, a little bit more than 182. So this just kind of gives you a couple scenarios to think about. These are things we're watching. Uh, I'm curious if we'll be right on one of these, but we'll all find out soon enough and i am willing to bet money that before uh the the earnings call in may we will get an announcement from amc that the dilution is done that they raised 250 million dollars that it'll be approximately uh let's say 70 to 75 million shares at a price of just over three bucks jersey that's my, that's recycler huh uh, I seen your comment, Jersey recycler. Yeah, I see. I seen your comment. Yeah, we're we're tracking the volume as you can see in the, the spreadsheet. We're watching it every day. Yeah, it has been much lower. Like uh, today was low too. Yeah, uh, I have you know I have modeled sixteen or fourteen million daily volume, but you know I have it in italics because that was a guess. The green is actual. The volume's just fallen off and. I don't know if that's because uh, I, why do y'all, I'm curious what y'all think. I spent a lot of time thinking about this today. Um, is it because 
AMC is not willing to to lower the price that they're willing to sell at. I mean, if they put if they said, "All right, fuck it, sell shares at two forty, there'd be people buying them. You'd see a lot of volume, right? But I'm kind of thinking like they're saying, "We got three weeks still till the end of this month, and we don't need to do that. We don't need to drop the price. Let's just get out some shares at uh, 10, 12, 9 million volume a day. We can still be done by May 5th and raise our 250 million. And we'd prefer to be selling around three bucks. But I have j- just my guess the average price I sold on the fifth was around three bucks. I have it at 299 on Monday and 298 today. Uh, it looks like, you know, they're losing a little bit of, of, ability to to maintain a three dollar price but it's also low volume days so anyways i think we're close i think we might see a little bit of price erosion still this week just a little bit and uh you know some of some of that also matters i don't look at anything in a vacuum we got cpi data coming out tomorrow and whatever the market macros are doing could have some effect on amc also uh, Gia, Gia, I believe Cinemark's debt is the same, roughly the same as AMC's. The difference is no, it's it's like two point four billion. All right, so, so it's half. Yeah, yeah, it's basically half. But they 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 don't have as many theaters, and they got a lot more going for them. They're a smaller company. They're easier to you know. It's just it's not the same. Then uh, are you are you answering Anya? No, Gia. Anya is asking the same thing. Why didn't the Cinemark upgrade uh, affect AMC? AMC is diluting. To be blunt, nothing's going to affect the price, Anya, until the dilution's done. But mm-hmm. Cinemark is going to be probably lose a couple pennies in Q1, and they're going to make a lot of money in Q2 and Q3. Uh, they're they're profitable at a lower box office than AMC. Same industry, same movies. Because of their smaller size, they are more nimble, more profitable. They have lower debt. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say that too. AMC hits its stride when the box office is big. Then you have more theaters bringing in more revenue faster than anybody else. But until you hit that over the hump, AMC is going to look like the loser and it will be the loser until you get over that 10.1, 10.4 domestic box office hump. I agree. That's why I I pulled that comment. I seen it. I was like, we might as well just answer this again. Maggie, what's up? (laughs) Maggie says you're hard to find. Maggie, I'm here all day. Every day in Discord. And you are a member of the channel, so you have free access. Anya wants to know what you did with your Palantir, Maggie. So what are your guys' thought? What's the chat's thought on these? these uh, on Adam Aaron's news? Yeah. Did y'all know about this news before before we started this live stream? I'm I'm trying to I've been hitting Twitter all day trying to check for CinemaCon updates and then that, boom that one just dropped in my lap as we were sitting here having our evening chat about AMC stock. <laughs> I know no everybody way. asked me everybody asked me Tony why are you <laughs> hang on popcorn. Tony, why are you so focused on AMC stock when they're losing money? It's not the it's not a it's not the biggest position in my portfolio, but we understand I probably understand what's going on with AMC and how it's going to trade better than any other stock. Whether that means it's going to trade up or down, I I understand now and every every day, week, and month that goes by, we get better at it. Wouldn't you say mediocre? I feel that way, yeah. 
Uh, and besides that, I want, I would like to see the company succeed. I don't know if they will or not. I'm hopeful they will. Um, I'm an A-list member. I go to movies all the time. I love movies. And, uh, so I, I have a, a vested interest in, in seeing them pull through. Plus the fact of all of you guys that, uh, maybe made different decisions than us over the last couple of years about how you're going to trade it. Maybe you made a different decision before I ever got on the scene. I, I got on the scene long after most of y'all had bought a, bought in to AMC. I didn't even start my YouTube till sometime in July of uh, 2021. And I had like five followers till September. So I, I, no one heard of me till September. You guys had already bought everything you were going to buy. People want to blame Tony DeNaro for making you lose all your money. You you were bought in long before me. Uh, my goal, my goal has been always to just help people understand the facts of these of this play, the facts and the financials. And uh, it's always been it's been a a troubled company. We played it for a, a recovery play. We thought there'd be a, a second squeeze in 2021. That didn't happen. And, and now we're just dealing with the fallout. There are still ways to recover whatever losses you had. And uh, Grandpa Barney listening to our channel and many other people, Anya, to us, Anya, Anya, I don't remember Anya if you followed some of the DD or not, but Anya's in the Discord. She can tell you there were a lot of people that listened when we said uh, that the, the conversion was going to pass. The judge was not going to rule against AMC, that uh, AMC price would plummet and Ape would go up. Now, I can't tell you what to do with your shares. I can only tell you my opinion about what I thought was going to happen. If I'm telling you my opinion, you can make a safe assumption that that's how I'm trading. So we, you know, the shares that I bought late 2021, because I, I made a decent amount of money before I started YouTube. I will never be red in this play. I'm playing on the house money in my AMC. But uh, some of that I gave back from 2021 to 2023 until I did that little AMC to ape swap and then rode ape up. And uh, so we're here to continue to make money in this play. We understand it very well, and we'd like to see less people listening to people who don't know what they're talking about and more people listening to folks who are trying to help you recover whatever you're down. But you're going to need to do some learning. You're going to need to let some trauma go. You're going to need to let some of the hopium go. And at the end of the day, whether you do that or not, know that we are still here pulling for the success of the company. This is not a us versus anybody. We all want the same thing for this company to succeed. We might have a different outlook on what it's going to take. My outlook is it's going to take profits. Other people's outlook is the market needs to crash or banks need to fail. I don't care about any of that stuff. I'm focused on one thing, cash flow, cash balance, profits per share. That was a long rant, Mediocre. What do you think about that? I think it was uh, well said, actually, to be honest with you. Right? Like, I, I, I feel the same way. It's kind of uh, pointless to keep hashing all the stupid stuff, right? And you don't, I'm not telling anybody they have to do what I do or listen to me or whatever. Make up your own decisions, right? But – for me, I can't – I have to trade on what I know is going to be successful, right, because I'm not willing to lose my money, and that's just the truth, and I'm sorry, right? Some people may be willing to lose their money and their life savings, but I, I'm not one of them, and I'll do everything in my power to uh, to make money and grow my portfolio because um, I got five wives – why not wives, wise, you know? I got uh, my wife and my four kids, and that's just it. So the money I have invested, I want to make sure that they, they can keep that money, 
right? It does something good for the family. So for me, that's what it's about. And you may not like what I say or whatever, but it is what it is. I got my five whys, and that's what they are. It has. I've said this before, but it has really pained me watching all of the retail plays, dozens and dozens and dozens of them over the last three years. People, I'm going to ride this to zero if I got to and teach those damn hedgies a lesson. The GTII people got a fucking lesson today. BBIG, Troika, I mean, Bed Bath & Beyond, the, the list is endless. People that had the same talking points. We're going to teach them a lesson. I'll write it to zero if I have to. I watched all of them write it to zero. And uh, I hate to see people do that. Now, we don't the, want to see that happen to you guys. That's the, the bottom the, line. The, the reason I talk about AMC, like out of all of those bunches, it's the one that's actually got growing revenue and a chance out of this fucking hole. I know the, the bears and my haters hate that I talk about this stock, but guys, it's got growing revenue. And 2025 is expected to be even more. Yes, this year's going to suck because of the, the writer's strike. How bad? I don't know. We'll see. But uh, it's not like all of these other companies. Some of them, like Mullen, have no revenue. Uh, everybody else had massive convertible notes uh, or warrants or declining revenues or no products. It's just ridiculous what people hitch their wagons to. GTII, like they fall for the little siren song of the people on Twitter saying the naked short volume, I predict, you know, based on that, the naked short volume, not the short interest. They don't want to talk about that because there's none. The naked short volume volume tells me there's 2 billion naked shares. Meanwhile, every year on GTII, they lose more and more money. They've never really booked a revenue. They've never inked one deal. And, uh, I just saw that they they pulled mediocre like sixty three million dollars in executive pay and contributed sixteen million to charity on no income. Now, who are they stealing that money from? Do you think the shareholder? Exactly. But y'all want to get mad at Adam Aaron? And there's some YouTubers guys that will curse Adam Aaron up and down. And then go over and make one video a day about GTIIs on our side. Wake the fuck up, people. You got misled by another clown on Twitter. First it was Lou, then it was everybody else. You are, you are championing a company with no revenue. What the fuck are you doing? Well, we just want to teach the shorts a lesson. Great. Pick a company that's making money. Then you might have a chance. Why do you think the shorts, if there are any in the first place, why do you think they're targeting that company? <laughs> How the heck are you going to win? <laughs> Tony, what do you say to the people who right now um, say that the short interest on AMC is climbing? It's around 20%. And we know they're diluting. And I get the messages every day, people DMing me, short interest is over 20%. Tony, you said you love a play where the short interest is over 20% because then it's potential for a short squeeze. That is true. I did say that. But I know that Adam is diluting. And this is the same with every company that does has ongoing dilution. Uh, the share count, outstanding shares, is going to be updated, guys, in a couple of weeks. And we're going to go from 260 million to 330. And your short interest is going to drop to 15%. Not the number of shares. Number of shares shorted probably stay the same. But as far as a percentage of the overall float, 15%. It's just a number. I don't really care. I don't really care about the number anymore. I don't care about the number of shares. I don't care about the percentage. What I'm mostly focused on now is the box office, the cash flow, the cash burn, and the, the profits. Because 
if those things start getting better, these shorts will get out of the way. That is my belief. I think they're starting to now. Why would you keep shorting a company that has nothing but green pastures ahead? Just look at um, a noisy Corex, right? He said he said uh, on the show the other day that um, you know he's not looking at shorting AMC because why? Because it's, it's too risky. risky. At, it's risky at these levels, exactly. You know, um, it's in the range where where there's value, right? So a short is going to short when a company is overvalued. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of the market is to move the price based on company value. And that's ultimately what's been happening, I think. And uh, it, ju it just gets old, you know? I mean, I don't know. It just... If it if it's trading at you know fourteen bucks and the the company doesn't have the the box office or anything to support that that price right and then you got to expect the price to fall and that's ultimately what's been happening right I mean I was mad when it fell from twelve to where we're at today I thought thank it was you ten dollars I, I just want to say thank you to Stephen real quick he says thank you for the dilution spreadsheet good work does not go unnoticed from our community, but it does get cursed out a lot, Stephen. <laughs> not not you by you. I, I appreciate that. He says, now give us 2026, 12 billion domestic box office projection. Okay. I said I would give you that before we came on live. Let me pull that up. Uh, mediocre. Sorry to interrupt. Keep going. No, you're good. You're good. I, I just want everybody to know that uh, Stephen's part of the group. Um, and we, we're very tight with the, uh, what we discuss and we discuss the stuff all the time and it's not only AMC, we discuss other other um, tickers as well, but you know, we have a group of people who take this very, very serious. It's, it's not a joke to us, you know, and everybody is contributing different thoughts, different DD challenging each other. This is not a, a yes club. Yeah. I mean, we all, we all want to see the company move up. We all want to see it succeed, but we're, we all have varying degrees of reality. Is that a fair way to say it, mediocre? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Stephen, I'm going to model 12 billion box office with a 32% uh, capture rate on admissions. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to do any decrease in cost. All right. Cause we, we don't know what's going to happen with interest rates. We don't know what's going to happen with lease operating costs. So let's just keep everything the same. But, you know, maybe we could expect that they'll come down a little bit. I don't know. Depends on the debt restructuring. But if I just leave it the same, Stephen, the net profit for the year would be $423 million. Net, oh wait, I need to update, update the share count. Let's say $330 million. Uh, $1. twenty-eight per share annual earnings. Now you already know the model I gave you before, you know, verbally about how you can translate that into a price target, but roughly around 423 million net profit on a 12 billion box office. Now I don't know if we'll get there, but, uh, you wanted the numbers. That's what I got from my spreadsheet. I am sure one says what's happening to the money that investors put in the stock. That's a good question. I am. So generally guys, when you're trading stocks or bonds, you're trading in as what, what is called a secondary market. So you're, you're just trading, you're trading with other people. What happens to the money that you put in? It goes in someone else's pocket. You're buying shares. You buy a hundred shares. You could be buying them for mediocre. You could be buying them from Al from Boston. You could be buying them from, from BlackRock. That's the thing, guys, too. I want to say this, right? Like a lot of a lot of times you'll hear 
nobody's selling, nobody's selling this thing, you know, we're holding. That's not necessarily true, right? I mean, there's day traders out there, and I hold my shares, don't get me wrong, but um, there's a lot of day traders out there that don't, and they just take the momentum trades and they exit, and that happens a lot. And so that's where your money's going. To be totally honest with you guys, that's where it's going. So generally, whether you're buying shares or bonds, you're buying them in a secondary market. The company is not benefiting from that. However, there are exceptions, like if a company did a bond offering that you were able to participate in, in a new, a new bond offering, and through a broker, you you were able to buy those, and you know you could you could potentially uh, Sparky, correct me if I'm wrong. I see Sparky in the chat, uh, but more commonly for most of you, if the company is actively doing dilution, there's a chance that some of the shares you're buying right now are going straight into uh, straight to AMC's balance sheet. Some portion of the volume every day, some portion of those shares are being sold by AMC. And so your money is going to the company and you'll see it on the balance sheet in the next, not this earning statement, but Q2, you'll see it there. Yeah. I think um, that's the thing, right? Like, that's the only time that a AMC, uh, the company, gets any money out of the stock is during a dilution or, or some sort of action like that, right? The ever the day to day trading is between regular people and institutions and such. You know, AMC doesn't have uh, really a say in that. Let yeah, let's break it down to the most simple way I can explain it. Every day, any stock you're trading on a normal day, you're trading with someone else whether you're buying or selling, you're paying for future earnings. So if you're buying, you think that the earnings of that company are likely to be higher in the future. So you're willing to pay a higher price and hold for a higher price. If you're selling, typically, again, a very basic explanation, you're thinking that the earnings of the company are likely to decline. Therefore, the price is going to get eroded. It's really that simple. And you're just trading with another person who has a different mindset than you. Uh, sometimes, yes, people are buying or selling because they need the money for personal finance. I'm not, you know, their, their household or they, they find a better opportunity. But at its most simplest form, I want you to think of what you're buying is future earnings. And the reason AMC and GameStop have been getting obliterated is there is no future earnings. GameStop finally just announced some earnings and it was a couple pennies. And that's why they're going to continue to get obliterated. The price is overvalued for those paltry earnings until the company changes, a, announces a strategic initiative that has better earnings. Yes, they've got a billion dollars of money in the bank, but it is poor use of capital. Their re return on invested capital says that they're just, basically wasting that money. It's sitting there not doing anything. So despite what some people are telling you, GameStop is not as much of a slam dunk as you think because just because they have a billion dollars on the balance sheet. That is not good enough in Wall Street's eyes. You're being tricked by people on YouTube that tell you that's the most important thing. It's not the most important thing. It's an important thing. It's great. That's not what you can't focus on one thing. Wall Street's looking at 10 things, 20 things. I, I call it, remember, remember Lou, follow the bouncing ball, but it's more like, look over here. You know that trick, mediocre? Yeah. Look over here at this one thing that's really good. Don't pay attention to that. All that. <laughs> that's how GameStop is right now. That's what they're selling you on YouTube. Just look at okay, this, guys. Example. It's fantastic. Forget all that. You, We hear all the time that we think that a specific stock is, is worth X amount of money. Just because we we believe that doesn't make it true. I'll give an example, right? If I thought Ford was worth $1,000 a share, so I'll, I'm willing to buy it at 900 so I can make 1000 bucks a share, but it's trading at 12 You know what I mean? It doesn't mean it's ever going to get there. What do you think is going to happen to that money? Whoever sold me 
the shares is going to take that money. Right? Because if you enter an order like that, it's going to sell immediately. You know, it, it's it just like I don't know. It's 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 weird. They're, you're gonna they're gonna take your money. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's I don't know if the if you if the stock is overvalued, it's gonna depreciate in value because of that reason. But mediocre. If we're all holding, how can it depreciate in value? How can they knock the price down? Because we're not all holding, Tony. Not everybody holding. That's, and? That's, and so, all right, and. so uh, I, I know what you want to talk about. So, for example, if you want to buy the stock and you don't buy the stock at the ask price, the stock, you, we can have buyers all day long, but if you don't hit the ask, we don't smack the ask, it's not going to push the stock price up. So just if you buy under what, what the ask is, even though there's buying pressure, the stock price is going to come down. That's just not only that. If if we own eighty percent of the float and nobody's doing anything except five percent of the people, those other ninety five percent that own the rest of the float, they're just observers to the few people that are trading. Exactly. If you own the float and you're holding and you're not actively buying, I'm not telling anybody to buy. I'm just explaining the mechanics. The freaking uh, high-speed traders that are trading millions of shares a day back and forth, they're the ones moving the price direction. You're just an observer as a holder. It exactly. doesn't matter. doesn't matter if you got 320 million shares and only 10 million are available. They can churn through those multiple turns per day and still move the price down. And you couldn't do anything because you're just holding. It's really that simple. It doesn't have to be about naked shorts. But like Mediocre said, there are people selling and, the, and there are institutions lending out shares on top of that, increasing the flow even more, making even more liquidity of shares. That it whole was, uh, ETF lending, institutional lending, they have a lot of legal ways to push the price down. If the stock is volatile, traders are going to trade it. Um, if there's movement in the stock, it's going to be traded on a daily basis because there's money to be there. You may be holding it, but... People don't care about that. They're there to make money. So they're going to trade it to make money. That's just the truth. And you're not going to stop that from happening. And in their mind and in their model, even though you don't agree with it, whether it's GameStop, AMC, Tesla, I don't care what the stock is. Once they set their mind that it's overvalued, they're going to keep trading it till it gets to the point where the general Wall Street consensus is, all right, this is, there's not any more money to be made here because if I keep pushing it down, that hedge fund over there is going to fuck me over. You know what I'm saying, Mediocre? Exactly. They I'm compete not, I, with each other. They're all pushing it down, but as soon as it reaches a fair value, they all kind of stop because they know if I keep pushing, my enemy over there is going to screw me. I got a perfect example of that. Um, there's a video that's out with our, our friend Kenny in it, right? And, and Kenny flat out is upset with the SEC. Why? Because he wants to control the price. He thinks that's his right to do it. And, I mean, I'll just tell you guys, I, I, I believe that there is some corrupt parts of the market. Yes, I don't disagree with you there, right? But you, what what's going to have to happen to change it is unlikely to happen, in my opinion. You know, and I just, I don't want to see people get wrecked. That's just the truth. Maggie's asking about Palantir and Oracle. I haven't looked at Oracle recently, Maggie. Uh, I have a Palantir chart here. We were talking about it the other night and missing you, Maggie. Anya was, Anya was wondering what you ever did with your Palantir. And I, I said then that I need to, Still do an updated refresh on my Palantir DD and redraw my uh, Fibonacci chart, and I haven't done it yet. But uh, 
if I I'll read I'll redraw this in the next couple of days and do an updated Palantir DD video, Maggie. But uh, I, I'm not the type of person to buy something into a big run up like this. I'll wait for a pullback to a recent level. So I was trading it a little bit in here, not a whole lot. And I was really wanting a stronger pullback that I never got. So I need to, I need to spend a day and identify my new levels. That's where I'm at. And I haven't looked at Oracle. So no, no comment on that. What do you, what do you uh, think of head stock? Here's comment. If retail owned a hundred percent. Yeah. Well, the problem is, is you have to get retail to own a hundred percent. You haven't done it's, that. Here's why it's never going to happen. Because AMC's in index funds, right? Right, mediocre. Yes. And those index funds are going to buy shares to make sure that AMC is represented in that index. So let's say retail doesn't want to sell. Well, what would happen? The price would increase till someone sells. And you're talking literally millions of people. You're not going to have a cohesive unit. There's going to be people that sell. That's the problem. Right. That's why we never truly owned the float. We owned it 80 percent, I think, but we never owned 100 percent. And as soon as institutions get a piece of it, they're going to lend it out and increase the float even more. So it's kind of a, a pipe dream that you could ever own 100 percent of the float. And I know people will tell you DRS and I don't want to go down this road. But that doesn't it hasn't, really protect it hasn't either. worked for GameStop. They have probably the highest DRS that anybody's ever heard of. <clears throat> and uh, their price is still getting smacked and has been for three years. So I, I haven't found it a particularly compelling argument. I still say do it if you want to, but I, I haven't seen it make a meaningful difference for GameStop. So, I mean, I'll say this, even if, uh, we could prove market corruption. The only way to change it is to change Congress, right? Because they make the laws. They're the ones who put uh, the the SEC, the head of the SEC, in to run the SEC, right? It's all a, uh, it's all done by Congress. And if, I mean, good luck. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not willing to uh, put my money out there and risk it. Um, we could barely get through electing people now, for God's sakes. I mean, I don't know what to say. That's just my thought. I'm not going to risk my money that way. Uh, I think what Sparky's trying to say is what I was alluding to. Like, when you have millions of people, everybody has different motivations. Everybody has different profit points. Everybody has different pain points. And I can tell you from being a YouTuber and running a Discord, both, for everybody who tells you no one's leaving, no one's selling, yes, they fucking are. Because <laughs> I've seen a lot of people leave. I've seen a lot of people leave. Uh, that You don't hear me saying that no one's selling, no one's leaving. You never hear me say that. If I do, it's a fucking joke. Yeah, I'm not, I don't say that anymore either. I used to, I used to think that I did. I'll admit it. You know, I wanted, I wanted what we were saying to be true, but I mean, I'm not willing to give up my financial stake. That's the problem. You know, I got to take care of my home first. At any rate, to bring it back to something positive, mediocre, we, we, you and I, and most of the people we talk to are mostly bullish. Call us crazy. I know 
the Bears are going to hate me for saying this. The no voters are going to want to sue me for saying this. Guys, nobody fucking pays me. I'm way too unpopular to be paid. So what you're hearing is my opinions, my DD, how I'm trading. It's not financial advice for you. We like AMC based on what we know about the finances. We recognize that it's speculative, that there's still risk. The debt hasn't been restructured. Who knows what that news is going to be. It could drive the price up or down. But it's it's got a somewhat of an appeal. Uh, we're, we're degenerate gamblers. And uh, we like it. We like it at this sub three dollar price. Like two, as long as it's holding here, two ninety three bucks. Uh, I I like accumulating here. Now, if some news came out tomorrow that there was going to be another dilution, what do you think I would do? Mediocre. Uh, you would sell. I know you would because I would too. I would exit my position. Yeah. So for anybody who th is saying that we're trying to trick people into selling and bag hold. No, you don't bag hold in front of impending bad news. That's why I sold last week before the dilution because I had a feeling based on my DD that a dilution announcement was coming. Same thing that I told y'all for a year was going to happen with the reverse split and conversion. Necessary actions I explained why the company needed to do it. Doesn't mean you need to stand in the way and take it. You can still exit the play. I did. Absolutely necessary. Or they would have been bankrupt. They would have been bankrupt multiple times, many times over, over the last three years without the dilution that they'd done. And Sparky, I know you're not a big fan of AMC. So do you agree or disagree with what I'm saying? You, Sparky, uh, I, I don't I don't really know how to categorize him. I, I, I call him kind of like a fact checker. <laughs> He's a fact checker. If I say something too bullish, he'll probably call me out on it. But I think anybody who is, has any sort of accounting training uh, would readily admit that uh, the math clearly shows AMC only avoided multiple chapter 11s because of the dilution that they've done as painful as it was for anybody who held through all of it. Sparky says agree. And again, for all you no voters who say my math says they'd never go bankrupt. Go talk to a CPA, you no voters, go talk to a CPA, a licensed accountant, sell him on your case. And if he agrees with you, I want to interview your CPA live and we will embarrass the fuck out of him and we will make sure everybody knows his name, his credentials and uh, how he's trying to explain that this company would not have gone bankrupt. So go find me a CPA. I don't want to hear from your, your Reddit DD crowd, your little 400 popcorn gang. These people have no idea what they're talking about, but I want to give you a chance. I want to give you a chance because you're convinced on your math. If you think you can find a CPA who's willing to come on live with their real name and their credentials and explain how this company was not going to go bankrupt, I will happily interview them and I will bring CPAs and we'll, we'll have a great discussion. So far, that invitation has been open for a year. Haven't heard a peep. I just heard people get mad at Adam Aaron. The thing is, is the math really does matter. That's the most important thing, right? And if you're not going to do the math, you're not going to know. We do a lot of math, Tony. You know that. And we do math without an agenda. Like the problem with these no voters is they want to prove embezzlement, fraud, RICO violations. So they create an equation in their head. They've already got a preconceived notion that AMC could have not done dilution and ended the year with $20 million, and that would have been just fine. $20 million was not going to be ever just fine. $20 million on the balance sheet, they would have been bankrupt by forced bankruptcy by the lenders long before the that. How, 
with $20 million, so I'm just being realistic here, seriously, okay? I don't know the context of what Tony's talking about, but I'll just say. Uh, the mathematician on the popcorn gang says, I presented mathematical proof to the judge. The math doesn't lie. They could have not done bankruptcy, and they would have had $20 million left. If they had $20 million left, I'm going to tell you all what would happen, okay? What would happen is you would have theaters closing. Why? Because they can't pay their fucking employees. That's why. You can't buy fucking soda from Coca-Cola. You can't get your fucking popcorn delivery. How These guys don't understand what money? working capital is, mediocre. They look at a number at the end of well, the year, and they also didn't think about the – the minimum liquidity, minimum liquidity requirements from the lenders. AMC would have been bankrupt, forced bankruptcy long before they got to 20 million left on the balance sheet. I understand that, but I was just trying to make it simple for them. The simple math, Tony. I mean, this company spends a lot of money. It has a lot of overhead. We need to generate that money, you guys. And if it's not there, on the balance sheet and working capital, it's not going to work. It's not going to mesh. You know, and that's the truth. Oh, I see Corax. <laughs> How long have you been sitting down there? Uh, just a bit. I I, I uh, message in the private chat. I'm like, oh, sure, he'll, he'll see that. <laughs> I did see that. I, did, I don't often look, you know, I, mm -hmm. I barely read the chat because so many people are cursing at me. <laughs> But uh, okay. thank you for joining us, guys. Um, yeah, just so you know, if you haven't been in our live streams, I'm I am doing my absolute best to bring on uh, a balanced viewpoint of of guests, so that you're not being spoon fed Kool Aid. And it doesn't mean that you have to like everything I say. Doesn't mean you have to like everything Corex says. I own AMC. Mediocre owns AMC. Corex does not. We're not all in the same plays. I don't talk to Corex every day. I don't talk to him about plays. Uh, I just like that he can, he likes looking into the legal stuff, bankruptcies and things. And I, I think he's got a pretty good head on his shoulders. And well, I mean, for the most part, he, d he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't insult people. Well, I mean, usually when the, <laughs> if you swing, I'm going to swing back. Let's okay. If you swing at him, he's going to swing back. If you swing at me, I'm mostly just going to ignore you because you're a clown. But uh, Corex will swing swing back. So I guess that's why we get along, Corex, because I don't I don't lash out at you. You know, I'm I'm okay with you having a different opinion, and I actually value your right to express that opinion as long as you can Same. say it in an adult way, and then we can we can talk about why we disagree. It's these people that move to the, you know, the name calling and the insulting because they can't actually defend their position. Uh, those people won't ever be on this show. But uh, I, I guess this is a long way of saying uh, I don't agree with everything Korak says. He doesn't agree with everything I say. You guys aren't going to like everything everybody on this panel says, no matter what. But I want you to have a variety of opinions and I want you to see people that can talk about things like an adult. That's what I, I really tried to do that a couple of years ago. Remember that mediocre when we tried yeah. to have everybody on? I do. That's how I ended up kind of getting started. And, uh, you know, I wanted that to... didn't end. That didn't end so well. <laughs> was... we, we found out a lot of people are crazy. Oh God. <laughs> Had crazy. too many nuts in the, in the, the party bowl. Huh? <laughs> Had too many nuts in the party bowl. Yeah, I mean, it took a while, but if you if you talk to someone long enough, they'll expose their crazy Corex. <laughs> I found that out a lot on Twitter. <laughs> Twitch. Twitter's a good spot for that, to be honest. It's uh oh my god. Clark, uh yes, Tony actually did speak to Massalorian. I'll let him tell you about it. Yeah, I, I talked to him last night as I was coming home from Civil War. And uh, he said he's going to try and get, he settled in wherever, whatever state he's in up there in the Northeast. He settled in. He, he said his goal was to get his documentary out by this weekend. And he 
hoped to be ready to start doing live streams back with us starting maybe this weekend or early next week. So, so confirmed, not tied up in mediocre's basement. Yeah, he's not in mediocre. He's not in mediocre's basement. He's not in a jail in the Dominican Republic, <laughs> and he did not get held uh, by the Canadian police. Miguel says, "Is AMC going to squeeze?" In your opinion, uh, Miguel, I only talk about. Uh, stocks that have over 20% short interest as potential squeeze candidates. AMC has 20% now, but not really because of the ongoing dilution. So it's not at my criteria to talk about that right now. After the dilution's done, it'll be around 15%. Correct. So what's going on in your world? And then I'll take a couple more of y'all's questions. Oh, uh, not, not a whole lot. After that uh, screen cap he sent me, I was finally able to define Donahue's lawsuit on Pacer. So I, I was skimming over that and everything. So Donahue George, I think I just spit out some popcorn. Donahue's well, no. suing Ken Griffin, right? He's suing a whole slate of people. Uh, and uh, I, I just saw him tweet that he wants people to write letters and tell judge how they feel. But I, I was a little confused by that because I thought the evidence was required to, to launch yeah, a, a case. Like, are we, are we going, is this the court of feelings that we're, that he's going into or is yeah, it a federal court? It's a federal court. Oh man. So what are the letters going to do? Nothing. <laughs> in, in fact, they'll go straight into the shredder. Well, they might get produced on the docket like they did in the De Delaware Court of Chancery case, but they might just, they're, they're probably not going to do anything. Actually. So it's a historical lexicon, you know, yeah. evidence yeah. that means nothing. Pres preserving, preserving people's outrage for posterity. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to make light of it. It's just, guys, if you're going to court, you actually have to have evidence. Mm-hmm. In a letter writing campaign, while it might make people feel like they're doing something, it's about as useful as a, I don't know, a petition to ask the board of AMC to quit. I will say for how weak, now I've only cursory looked at the amended complaint. Um, so I, I don't know for sure. And I haven't seen any motions to dismiss on it. There, Those may still be pending. But the way it sounds like from cursory reading the docket, this may go to trial. They have a trial date scheduled, but that doesn't mean that it will go to trial. It could be resolved can, before. Can that. I can I just add in for posterity? Mm -hmm. I encourage all of y'all to write letters. I'm not trying to discourage anybody from writing. Tony just, he's trying to sabotage the case. He doesn't want you writing letters. No, write your letters, please. I hope all y'all do. I'm just it's saying, just don't be, not to do anything. don't be upset when nothing happens. Because nothing's going to happen. But please, please write your letters. Pam the trader in the house. What's going on, Pamela? Pam says she How are you, Pam? Massalorian last night. All right. What you guys feeling about CPI tomorrow? Actually, I uh I, I I'm I'm actually kind of hoping it doesn't go up you know i'm hoping it just stays the same let's not raise or lower i my feelings on it is that you know oil's been going up oil is a component of the cpi i think it has nothing to do with actual inflation actual monetary growth it'll have everything to do with price increase that's the big problem when you look at cpi is cpi is a price index which could be correlated to inflation, but also prices can go up independent of inflation. So I think it's going to go up because of the input from oil going up. I don't know by how much, but if it does go up, you could see a bit of a red day tomorrow. I don't know how the market's going to respond to it, but I would expect CPI to be up. Not a whole lot, but up. I, I'm okay with a red day tomorrow because it, it'll it uh, help with Overcome this It'll game. help with your AMC options trading. <laughs> 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 I want more of that premium 
bleed out. I don't. Did, were you here when we were talking about our options trading strategy? Uh, no. Were you listening in? No, I, I I happened to just get your link a few minutes ago and went, "Oops, sorry." Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we have uh, three dollar uh, cash secured puts and three dollar covered calls. So we're hoping it ends up like at two ninety eight on Friday. Sounds like a plan. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, the only thing I it's don't like. It's though, how uh, CPI data and stuff like that, it controls the overall market, but a lot of people don't even recognize that, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I'm glad that we actually are talking about it because that does move the market. Yeah. And when the market moves, all equities in, in the market move for the most part. Yeah. And there's a bunch of different like indicator things that move them that move the markets that people don't normally look at. Like sometimes you'll see a lot uh, when there's a big TLT rally, you know, markets are down. Well, that's because people are dumping their stocks to buy bonds or if DXY rallies, that's a big one. It's like I've seen a bunch of people on social media who will get on on the, the Twitter and be like, oh, my God, corruption, everything. Stocks are going down. Or that's like, well, yeah, DXY went up, which means. The value of the dollar went up, so things priced in dollars go down because the value of people, dollars. Were what more. DXY is, because some people don't even know. DXY I'm sure. Is a composite index. It's basically a group basket of a bunch of different uh, foreign currencies weighted against the dollar, and it heavily leans towards both uh, the yen and towards the euro. So those have the biggest outsize effect on DXY, but it's basically tries to index the dollar versus the rest of the world currencies. So if DXY goes up, less dollars in circulation, value of other currencies related to the dollar go down. Correct. Did you see the headline or my video tonight about Adam Aaron saying chapter 11 for AMC is inconceivable, his words? No, I haven't yet, but I mean, given the amount of cash they have on the balance sheet and if they can keep paying down debt and taking care of that, it doesn't seem highly likely uh, at this stage. Not not in 2024, at least. Yeah. And 2025 looks better. So <clears throat> I, I brought that up to segue into Carlos's comment about uh, Highcroft. Uh, I watched uh, Diane, Ms. Diane Garrett, CEO of Highcroft, uh, live this morning in Zurich doing a presentation at the Gold Forum. And she did the normal, you know, uh, what do you call it? Dog and pony show. Mm -hmm. We have this resource. We got that resource. It's open. Da, da, da. Uh, great. We know about all that. But the most, and, and Highcroft has a lot of gold and silver. Mm -hmm. Great potential. Uh but I need to see the pre-feasibility study. I need to see what it's going to cost. And I actually published uh, in my Discord, guys, if those of you that are in it, if you didn't see it, if you're wondering what a pre-feasibility study is and what it look, looks like, I published one from the most recent mine Ms. Garrett worked at. It's hundreds of pages. I pointed out to you the chapters that are uh, the most important, you know, that I'm going to be looking at, the economic viability but there's also maps, there's uh, workflow drawings showing every machine they're going to need, every truck, every ball mill, every conveyor, the cost of each, the labor, the camps to build the new facility. I mean, because this was one up in Canada. It's a massive document. But getting down to the economic viability, that's really, you know, what is the price of gold and silver need to be for a high croft to be profitable that's where i'm gonna jump to when that drops ms garrett is uh promising us later this year we will get that and uh so we'll find out maybe later this year if high croft is going to be a go or not but she said something interesting something new today that i haven't heard her say the at the very end of her interview the presenter the host asked her what's the deal with highcroft like are you guys gonna actually mine or are you do you have a different exit strategy and she said well we 
are going to continue on our plan to de-risk the project. That means get debt off the balance sheet, explore, make sure you have all the resources known, have a good plan. And she said, we will uh, continue to look at every opportunity that could provide shareholder value. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think she might have alluded before, you know, maybe we'll sell to somebody like Haley, Haley Goldmine did in, I think, South Carolina, is it? Maybe there will be a buyer for Highcroft. I mean, if you have a small operation and you got a big boy that may be with gold going up looking for a possible thing, if you have a feasibility study and say, look, we can't afford to do this if you we sell it to you. You we can, have proven resources. We we can't really go tap the market for more money, but if you want to buy it, here you go. Uh, so yeah, that is a possibility, guys. Uh, it always is a possibility that Highcroft could be sold, but what I can't tell you is if it's trading at $3, I can't tell you what is it going to be sold at. There, mm -hmm. If it were sold, what's the, the market cap of Highcroft's, what, like $68 million right now? Mm -hmm. so if, it were, if it were sold for five times that if it were sold for two times the market cap i, I don't know what it's going to be sold for if yeah, it were you sold. can't really guess until you get a, an idea on that feasibility study yeah. so i know there's wild expectations and i hope as an amc shareholder because amc will benefit if highcraft goes up i hope that there's if it's sold that it's at a a premium to whatever the current price is, but I, I just can't promise you that. Other people will though. Other people will, fear, fear not. So Tony Treetop says, uh, so Highcroft is going to make popcorn now? Not, not that I know of, not that I know of. Uh, I like that comment. I, I would love to see a pre-feasibility <laughs> study from Highcroft that shows that you know they have a good internal rate of return forecast and they got all the permits and, you know, they can be up and running in two years because make no mistake, they're going to need to build the milling plant. That's going to be permitting, pouring concrete, ordering machines, installing them, yada, yada, yada. We're not like Highcroft's going to be mining starting tomorrow, you know, end of this year. You're still a couple years away. Remember Adam said seven year plan, but you could have a quicker exit on your Highcroft play if they sell it. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I mean, just by what you said, she said, just, it sounds like it because having been in a couple of these plays where uh, I bought in at a cheap company that was about to have their turnaround or was in their turnaround moment. Once they start saying we're seeking business opportunities or we're or like what you alluded to, it sounds like it's at least being explored at the very least. The uh, other thing that she said is here was the kind of more troubling thing that she said as she wrapped up her pitch before the questions start. She said, uh, our biggest investors are Eric Sprott and AMC. And yes, we do have debt on the balance sheet, but we're actively working to take care of that. And we'll talk more about that soon. I was like, oh, shit. You know what that means, Tony? I know what it means to me. <laughs> you think I know what it means, Tony? <laughs> Correct. You're the bad guy in this chat. Do you want to say what it I means? I mean, they just got done doing a reverse split recently. They're up back at $3. It sounds like a perfect time to go tap the equity markets. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> oh, shit. And they have a they have a filed shelf offering. Up oh, there you go, double bingo. <laughs> At least you said it in a nice way. You didn't say tap the way. equity markets. <laughs> I, I, it's I like a blood transfusion more. Than I, I don't shit. mean to be the bearer of bad news, and I don't know for sure what's going to happen. Look, they could get a buyout. They could say we found you know a massive a, additional gold vein. Anything could happen, but knowing what we know now, with no access to new information the highest probability outcome I see in the near-term future for Highcroft is more dilution. There's the D word. Fucking tell it, me. it happens with a lot of these junior <laughs> miners, like some of the ones that I've been looking at that I had puts on during the, the heyday 
back in 2021, 2022, dilution, dilution, dilution is the solution while you're trying to get the resource together, explore, do everything because you have no income streams. Right. And here's so here's even more troubling because uh, I haven't done a whole lot of junior mining investing. I mean, I'm figuring out as I go with Highcroft, but I guarantee you I know more about Highcroft than 90% of people talking about it on social media. But Tony, can I ask you a question though about what she said? Is that is that in writing that she said that? It's on video. I mean, I linked it in Discord. So I mean, she gave you all a heads up. I mean, if you're if you use your noggin, I would say that anybody... it's been in every 10Q mediocre, just like AMC disclosed everything that happened in the last three years. Everything that is going to happen to Highcroft has already been disclosed. No, wow, you mean that that they give you a heads up if you read the filings and everything? Everything and that is going to happen, everything there. that is about oh, wow. to happen to you in Highcroft has already been disclosed if you're reading the filings. That's why I cover them in my uh, quarterly videos. And I only do them once a quarter because people can only take so much bad news. But uh, Oh, I'm just a bad news train. I, I like to get it <laughs> over with. <laughs> I, I again I want Highcroft to succeed. I'm just being a realist. Like mm -hmm. they're gonna what was I gonna say? I don't know. I really Shelf really offering I apologize. her last job because she likes to talk about Romarco, the one that owned the Haley gold mine that got bought out by Ocean somebody or other. She never talks about Nickel Shaw. Not Casey Shaw, Nickel Shaw. It's uh, another mine up there in Canada. She never talks about that, but she worked at that mine, which is a platinum, nickel, and copper mine, if I recall correctly. And they were in the pre-feasibility study exploration phase when she was there for multiple years. And they actually, she left to come to, she had success at Remarco. She went to Nickel Shaw worked on exploration and got plucked away to come help out Highcroft. Nichols Shaw replaced her with someone else and they've still been plugging away. So I, I caught up on what's going on at Nichols Shaw. They did finally publish a pre-feasibility study. And that is the one that I linked in my discord today. And it is a, as someone that, you know, I've got a manufacturing and engineering background. You, I know my, degree is in economics and finance, but I never worked as a CPA. I never worked on Wall Street. I got in high tech and I did manufacturing, product design, engineering, factories all around the world. To read this document of how they plan out this mine to the nth degree is just fascinating, geeky shit for me. <laughs> I was like, yeah. wow, this is fucking impressive. They have every employee. They got the fucking latrines, <laughs> the the tents that they're going to live in, the kilowatt hours they're going to need. I mean, it is unbelievable. Someone put in a lot of work on these pre-feasibility studies. Some geeky shit for someone like me. <laughs> uh, even after they published that pre-feasibility study, they still have to do permitting up there in Canada. So they're stuck in that. This freaking stock, guys, I don't even want to tell you. It was, it's at a penny. Oof. It's at a penny. When Miss Diane was there, it was at 18 cents. And I'm not saying that's her fault. They made it all the way to the pre-feasibility pre study. I think they have a, a good return on the project. They're just a couple years away from mining because they got to, do all this construction. So I'm just, that was like a sobering moment for me. Like what if Highcroft gets in a two year delay for construction? It could drop back to a buck. It could drop to 10 cents. I don't effing know. That's why I call it a speculative play. I'm just telling you, go read some pre-feasibility studies and look at other projects, get educated before you make assumptions at Highcroft. I'm not the expert on mining. Likely you are not either. So careful who you're listening to and uh, make sure you do your own due diligence. But, um, but she, she said um, that they they were going to need some money or something. Yeah, said? well, here's, here's where I was going to end that very long story. 
with Nickel Shaw. The last three press releases they did were private placement equity raises. Mm. They can't raise money in the equity market, right? They can't. So no they one's going to go. buy it. They're going private placement. So even though they've done the pre-feasibility study, they're still diluting shareholders while they're building this thing out. So all I'm saying is like that's as a risk of generally risk averse investor. I like gambling guys, but I also like to know what I'm getting into and I size my risk. Highcroft scares me. I'm just going to say that's why I don't own any. And uh, if it comes out that the news is great and it starts shooting up, it takes me five seconds to buy in. Yep. I it got takes my, three clicks from Fidelity Trader Pro. I got, set. <laughs> I got my alert set. I got my alert set. I could always buy in. I'd fact, you know. That's, what if you that's miss the thing is, is like thorough research, like. I know I look at a bunch of stocks before I choose one. It's it doesn't take that long to get into it. There's a million different plays out there. Don't don't worry if you miss one. Make sure you do your homework. Make sure you size appropriately. You know all the all the safe stuff to make sure that you don't end up getting hustled in the end. Anya says, but they have an excellent safety record. <laughs> She starts off every meeting like, I'm Diane Garrett, and I'd like to let y'all know that we are so proud of our 100% safety record. Well, when you have no operations. Right. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 the, same thing, that's the inside yeah. joke. Yep. Carlos says, Highcroft was founded in 2017. See, Carlos, this is an unfortunate, uh, incorrect fact. Go read up on the history of Highcroft, please. Good night, Maggie. Thank you for joining in. Good night, Maggie. Ron says, when are you going to play the drinking bingo game? Corax nope. and I were talking about, well, I was suggesting we should do a GameStop bingo drinking game. Oh, no. Is that going to be tux night? No, on the earnings, that last earnings. When you uh -huh. showed me a bingo card, oh, I was like, a bingo card. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you showed me a bingo card and I had it in my head. Like, we should do a drinking game because... But I knew based on the bingo card, the we, were gonna be, we were going to be fucked up. Because that was not a bullish bingo card. And I was, oh, no, it was not. I was not, I was not <laughs> bullish on GameStop. I mean, I held it all the way. I bet you know where I found that bingo card. You know exactly what. The, yeah. I don't know who made it, but I can guess where you found it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, give us a good topic. I'm, I'm happy. I, I haven't been drinking a lot uh lately mm -hmm. but i'm I'm happy to if it's entertaining I, I to y'all you <laughs> saw saw the i finally found the beer i was talking about last time so I, I like a good crisp summer beer i don't want heavy beers in the middle of the heat of summer these are pretty good i like these i've seen those at the store the, the shock top i am drinking a uh a texas brew it's called real heavy Scottish Scotch Ale made in Blanco, Texas, or Blanco if you're Spanish. Uh, Joe says, How can I join your Discord? It's a secret, Joe. <laughs> People like to shit on me if I advertise. You know, I'm not a grifter, so I'm not going to tell you. You have to figure it out. <laughs> Maybe somebody in the comments could help you. I'm not here to sell. I'm not here to sell discords. We, we only want non hopium people that actually want to be in a community of like-minded folks to share discussions. We're not here giving trading signals. I'm not going to tell you how to get rich on Tesla options We're we do discuss plays, but not like all this other bullshit you see out there. Yeah. We don't do that shit. We talk and about I, I have no coffee mugs to sell either. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, I need a coffee mug, Tony. What the fuck? Coming up in Halloween, I will have some cowboy clown I, I, masks. I, I do have a, I have I some have cowboy clown mug. masks available. <laughs> I do have coffee mugs, but like uh, I, I think I'm gonna have to roll out the new the new coffee mug given 
given the live stream I saw yesterday, uh, Morant's Tears coffee mug. Hey, can for the for the dummies, can you explain? <laughs> and by dummies, I don't mean anybody watching right now except one. Can you explain what the trench coat and the hat is? Because I know there's a theme to that. Yes, there is. If you look at my, uh, are you uh, my... are you just don't have any clean clothes to wear or what? <laughs> <laughs> look, I regularly wash these, so. But no, like if you look at my YouTube icon, it's you got the the Raven with the with the. Well, he doesn't have a hat. He has a headphones, and then the trench coat and the tie and the shirt. So that is it's, your it's trilby, That is your channel identity. Yeah. So I just like so we're I like clear. The, I like the gumshoe detective vibe. It's yeah. Definitely. So just so we're clear, he does have clothes, clean clothes on under that. That is his channel and, identity. And for the record, this is a, a trilby. The brim in the back arcs back up. That's a trilby, not a fedora, you jackasses. Now, Mediocre, um, there was a little bit of misinformation put out about you uh, a couple of days ago <laughs> that someone said you're not allowed to talk about GameStop because you're not a gamer. Clearly you're not because your channel icon is an ape. So apparently you're only an ape. Wait a second. You mean to tell me, Tony, that this logo that everybody can see right clearly, here? Clearly by that icon, Mediocre, you only fuck with AMC. That's that's an ape right there? Well, I mean... I mean, anybody who's a gamer would know that that this image is from GTA Five. As you can see, the uh, Ferris wheel in the background there. You Wait, so you're FUD busting? You actually are a gamer. Oh, absolutely. How hard mm -hmm. is that skin to get, Mediocre? Oh, that mask? Yeah. Oh, that monkey mask. You can't even get that mask anymore, Tony. Oh, so maybe someone who's not really a very good gamer wouldn't even know about it? Exactly. That's why they didn't recognize you actually are a gamer? Most likely, I would say that was probably why they didn't recognize that. Mediocre, I hereby give you 100% <laughs> authorization to talk about GameStop. You're <laughs> clearly a gamer. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> I really don't have much to say about GameStop, you know, but, you know, Mr. Tux can say whatever he wants. I don't really give a shit. Uh, he got really worked up about you in that stream. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, just I'm the captain now, okay? <laughs> well, Mr. OG, Mr. OG troll over there is really doesn't like it when you rub that shit back in his face. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Tater Tot says, Tony, you are the number two stock squeeze specialist. Yes, I have the cer certificate <laughs> in my office back there to prove it. I just want to say that I was in the presence of both of the short squeeze specialists. You 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 have known both number one and number two, right? That's right. I'm I'm good. I've been lucky, man. I've been around the short squeeze specialists. Holy smokes! <laughs> Long story, guys, about that. Those of, those of y'all that've been around for a few years know that story. <laughs> Doc Zeno, man. Corax, Corax. One day we'll we'll fill you in. It's okay. It involves a lot of drama, intrigue murder oh murder i'm not oh. even being i'm not even being sarcastic no, he's now being are we talking about actual murder or like a murder actual, rape? actual murder oh jesus yeah. uh what else does it in, involve uh embezzlement yeah embezzlement. Man, felonies you, jail you, i mean you uh the intrigue. You working on a you on name a it this story's got it all the number one short squeeze specialist went down in a flaming heap of shit <laughs> <laughs> leaving me as the sole surviving short squeeze specialist <laughs> your winner and the new Hooray. undefeated Hooray. undisputed Still undefeated. reigning short squeeze champion <laughs> <laughs> holy fuck man the good old days you missed a lot miss you know not hanging with the amc crowd Making fun really? of us in 2021, Corex. I used to sit there and cringe every fucking day. Every uh, day. There's, there's some parts of it that like I, I catch up on and I just go like, that happened? And then there's some parts of it that's like, how are these people not in jail? And it's it's never somewhere in between. It's one or the other. Cringe or prison, which would you like? <laughs> Actually, what's funny is Jeffrey Roca is in the chat. He knows 
all about that whole story. How are hey, you? Hey, Jeffrey, doing? how you doing, huh? Hey, well, good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the server. Yeah, let's get this chat going, huh? Oh, look at all the ladies coming in the chat. Hang on, Jeffrey, hang on. Let me, I, I need to get the... Christopher's going to send you an email. Just be sure and click on it. It's, it's totally safe, Jeffrey. <laughs> Oh fuck me, dude! Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's funny, but it's not funny because so many people yeah. got hurt. Yeah, it's it's insane. It's absolutely insane. <laughs> Jeffrey says, "Man handling for gold." <laughs> listen, listen, Tony. All I gotta say. Is he knew his shit about dividends. <laughs> I can't do it, dude. I can't do it. He knew how to work that fucking one minute time frame, too. <laughs> what the hell is Spider Claw saying? Tony is slick. He is pumping the beer he's drinking now and he bought early at. What the fuck? <laughs> you, you you bought into the the alcohol company and now you're pimping it. Oh, you okay. Your... Yeah, it's a. <laughs> I forgot to say the Lou, not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never been paid by anybody, guys. Nobody, never, not one time. My wife was like, "I wish you got paid by somebody." You're out there I've working. already looked at the content of my channel and know that I'm not getting any sponsorships anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> No sponsorship. You mean Momo if, didn't contact you? <laughs> <laughs> I love. Look. I, lo I love when the conspiracy theorists say, "Like, look, guys, I get these emails all the time. I know that Tony Denaro and Mediocre, you know, they're they're getting paid because uh, I get I get the emails. Like, you dipshit, <laughs> you dipshit. Look. They're gonna pay you like a dollar if you get a sign up for Mumu." That's not getting paid, and you never have once ever heard me pitch that bullshit. Anyway, exactly. Yeah, look, with how much I cuss every other video on that channel, I probably can't even get Raid Shadow Legends. Oh, sponsor speaking me. Of, <laughs> speaking of uh, not getting paid, I'm gonna light up a cigar because we had some pink pantied Nim Nimrod <laughs> get his feelings hurt. He said, "You can't listen to Tony Denaro. You can only listen to my favorite YouTuber." Because Tony was smoking a pipe. Well, first of all, it's like, not a pipe. First of all, <laughs> check your goggles there, <laughs> Mr. Bojangles, or whatever the fuck your name was. Because searching on those glasses. <laughs> oh, shit. In English, se llama un cigar. Okay? Es un, es un cigar. No es un pipa. Or whatever the fuck you have. I forget how you say pipe. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's called a cigar. It's what a grown man smokes. And uh, if you're that easily offended, don't stick around for when I break out the whiskey. It's funny that you say that because I sent him a fucking message that says, if you're offended because he's smoking cigars, you better not stick around because he drinks yeah, vodka. I, I will never be monetized, uh, you know, with a sponsor because I smoke cigars and drink. Yeah. So I, I just got to be happy with my pennies per view. And the occasional super chat, but I barely even get those anymore since uh, Grandpa Barney never comes around. Yeah. Adam Aaron. Uh, yeah, Adam Aaron. That's another <laughs> another Jigger inside. Daddy. That's, that's another that, inside that's joke. How, that's how they send. That's how they send the payments so they're untraceable. It's yeah, these dipshits <laughs> think Grandpa Barney's Adam Aaron. We we talk to Grandpa Barney every day on camera. I'd every love to see. Day. I'd love to see one of y'all bet him a thousand dollars to show his ID because. He would gladly like to take your money. You know they would say that it's just Photoshop. Oh, or yeah. Or the, there's multiple Grandpa Barney identities, so you can't believe him. It's a real, it's a really intricate scheme. Yeah, the whole, level. every, when you're arguing with Flat Earthers slash AMC no voters. On the phone. When you're arguing with Flat Earthers slash AMC no voters, there is never any evidence that is adequate to them, so. Unfortunately, I'm going to tell you guys why Grandpa Barney doesn't uh, super chat anybody anymore. I'm going to tell you that the real reason you guys really want to know why, because why would he super chat somebody that's giving them bullshit information? That's the real fucking reason. 
And, and in reality, he doesn't get his payments from from Uncle Barney. He gets it from behind the bush on the grassy knoll. Get your facts straight. <laughs> Who me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I get a I get a couple hundred dollars from YouTube every month. You can go check Social Blade if you want to know how much I'm making off of YouTube. Socialblade.com. Well, uh, but I don't know. Oh, why? We're, oh, we were talking about sponsors. Uh, because of that ninny that came in and was mad that I was smoking a, a pipe. He, dude, I mean, if, if that's the best you got, if that's the best you got, don't trust Tony because he's smoking a pipe. You're way late to the game. I've taken <laughs> cannon shots straight to the stomach worse than that. <laughs> it's like he he's like, I'm going to, let me see if I can offend Tony. <clears throat> Carlos, that's what you did. You're like, I sent him a message, Corey. Actually, I said, "Listen, if you're gonna fucking address him, address him by the right fuck his name. Name his name is Tony the Clown Cowboy. You know." And well, uh, I forget what else I said. I said something else, but well, you know, was, uh, look after after the spanking he took for me on Sunday. The only way he can arrest he can address me is Daddy. <laughs> no, and now y'all are going a different direction. We weren't talking about a YouTuber. We were talking about some dipshit oh, well, in my comments yeah, today. I know. It's pro see, I have a theory about who the party involved is on that. So Oh, you think it was a, a YouTuber? Okay. Maybe. Well whatever. Gotta, whatever. <laughs> You're gonna have to try pretty hard to I mean, I get dozens of yeah, bullshit comments today. I just read them, block, move on. Yeah, I like reading them because it's funny as shit. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 funny. I'll screenshot them and send them to people so they can laugh at the dipshit right. and then I'll block them. I it's funny how try hard some of these people in the comment section are. <laughs> Anywho, sometimes I just look for the ridiculous comics comments just so I can, you know, get a good chuckle out of. I Let's think I might do that uh, thing like they do on TV where I read the mean chat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get the hate mail. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. The problem is you got to have some good quality hate mail to do that. Oh, I get no shortage of it. I'm sure you do, too. But yours is only coming from one person. I get a, I get a couple. In there. there was one uh, when I dropped the uh, first day hearing of the, the Joanne bankruptcy. Uh, and someone posted in the comment say, uh, comments saying, oh, I, I can't believe one of these uh, shills has their comments open. And the only reason you think that is because all the scam artists who lock down their their uh, comments section. <coughs> um, anyway. <laughs> I, I think most of the people like on your team, I, I know you're not a team uh, mm -hmm. correct, but. Like most of the people that you interact with that are against bad information, they all have their comments open. Yeah. The only it's, people that it's the other them. people. It's the people putting out the misinformation that then like uh what's that one? The dancer in MMTLP. He puts out yeah. the, the daily messages on Twitter. Make sure you block these five people today. They're known shills. Yep. Oh, oh, so you noticed that the MMTLP crowd is 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 uh circling their uh suppressive persons lists around we, we call it circling the wagons <laughs> protect yeah, the cult, the at, all. See, protect watched, the cult at all costs yeah see, that, cult, watched, that cult uh, stuff is spreading I, I see i've watched uh the the uh the documentary going clear about scientology so anytime i see those like you like you said circling the wagons block these people posts i just call it a suppressive persons list because that's yeah. what it is Guys, you know I'm on your side as a retail investor. I'm a just a retail investor, just like you. Nobody fucking pays me. We're trying to make money just like you. But if you are interacting with someone that's telling you a group of people to block, You're in a cult. then you should probably <laughs> run away from that person. <laughs> There's no reason you shouldn't have access to information. You might not like it. You can choose to block it. You can choose to mute it. You can choose to investigate it, but, uh, don't know but the only thing I don't understand, do. Corax, from like your mm -hmm. group of people is why some of them feel the need to incessantly, <laughs> maybe they're just sadistic personalities, like they like dunking on people, but like why? Why dunking on these poor people all day, every day? 
That'd be my question. I know you're going to say the same thing. Why do y'all pump all day, every day? <laughs> I mean, for some of them, yeah. But right. Like, I get it. I'm, I'm trying to be fair. Here. I know yeah. what you're dealing with. And I, you guys mostly put out factual information and then mm-hmm. you get docs, you get called every name in the book and it gets really ugly. So of course you're going to push back. I get it, but I'm just going to give you a chance to defend yourself here in your own words. I would for say a that that covered most of it, but I think there are a certain amount of people that they've reached the point where they've tried helping people and the people that can be helped have been helped. I mean, we're three years into this stuff. So by year three and you're getting this, this constant jaw jacking, no one's listening. They're still doing the same thing. And the people that mostly are going to be helped have been helped at this point. It's just wedging the, the, the little silly kid in the bathroom <laughs> just to wedgie him because you know, if, at this point, you're not going to change any minds, really, mm-hmm. on any of these plays. I mean, they made their decision a long time ago. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's true, Tony. I think we've been uh, making headway, to be honest. Well, that's well, why I keep trying. Like, don't get me wrong. There's some people that I will definitely rubberneck the car crash and point and laugh and go, you're an idiot for sticking in this long, and now you're in bankruptcy, and now you're getting screwed. But I try really, really hard to put that into, like, I've done literally every step to try and get them to understand what's going on here. Yeah, uh, I I guess I get it. I mean, I'll, I'll never be someone to laugh at people losing money. Uh, I I know I laughed that one time. Uh, your friend Manuel asked me, Tony, why why did you why were you celebrating the day of of the judge's decision, and and then why did you delete that video? It was we weren't celebrating that people were losing money. We were celebrating. We were right. We were right. And we had been taking fucking a million arrows a day for a year. Been been threatened, threatened, you know, by Ethan and all those people. And we knew we were right. So Mm -hmm. I was celebrating being right. That was, and that's why I deleted it. Cause it was kind of like in poor taste, like people lost money. And they're going to twist it that I was celebrating the wrong thing. It's like that moment in the big short where after they put in, uh, the the Cornwall Capital Boys put in their uh, reverse swaps and they're celebrating there in the casino and the guy grabs it's like what you know what are you fucking doing you yeah. know we're we're celebrating the you know economic destruction of people and they're like dude we're, we're making money it's like did you realize that you know when the unemployment rolls go up all this happens it's just just don't laugh yeah don't in the celebrate. in in the moment that evening I was celebrating but I woke up in the middle of the mm-hmm. night I was like that was this is that no one's going to understand what we were celebrating. Mm-hmm. So Tony, I'm thinking about doing like a series of videos, um, taking a small account, and making a, uh, you know, a couple thousand bucks with it. Right now it's a, I got an account with 400 shares or a hundred shares at four, like 450 bucks. You know, is what I got invested in it. So mm-hmm. thinking about doing something, get it to like three grand, you know, just kind of walk people through what I do. But I don't yeah, know if I'm, gonna always... do I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. We're going to have to wrap this up soon because I've got the third, the third warning. Strike three. <laughs> and you're about to be out. Uh, what time do we start, Mediocre? 930? Yeah. And I, I said one hour and it's 1130. So <laughs> it always starts like that with a live stream. Just one hour, two yeah. hours. I, I mean, I could sit here and go for another hour easy, but yeah. uh, she wants to hang out. And I, I that's fine. I, I want to hang out too. And I've been, I've been sitting here working at this desk for the most part, other than running and doing a couple of errands when the market closed. Mm-hmm. I've been here since. Okay. I've been sitting here working since what time did we start this morning? Mediocre. I was late. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, was too. I saw the I, options. On Monday. I woke I up late. a little bit later than normal. I think I woke up at seven and I was in here at my desk by eight. Yeah. I keep on, you know, I have this, this feeling that eight K's are going to drop soon. Hmm. Do it, having to do with the debt restructuring. So I keep on 
I want to be up and watching my computer by 8 a.m. And then I'll watch it for three hours after. I'm that way reasons. recently for different reasons. A, I've been doing better about getting to bed on time. And B, when you have like given they're not a huge part of my portfolio, but even if you have small short positions, you want to be there when the market opens in case something goes sideways, you can go and close, 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 close. Right. Right. <laughs> Isn't yeah. it annoying and how the market's only open from like 9.30 to 4, but Mm -hmm. You know, you spend all fucking day doing due diligence. <laughs> yeah. That's what my weekends are. That's that was what last week was. That's why I only had two live streams, not counting the football one, was because that whole time was just me going, all right, time to reorganize my watch list, see what's going on here with this. Do I want to buy into that? It takes a lot of homework. Well, gentlemen, I, I want to thank you for uh, spending your evening with me and uh, my my two friends. That's a that's a joke. No, you know, none of us have friends. Exactly. When I when I have had guests on here, guess who makes fun of them? I'm just a keyboard warrior. I, I I've had friends on here, other friends, real life friends, and 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 even when I have friends on. The same dipshit makes fun of them. So there's just no winning with these flat earthers, these goofballs. Uh, I mean, come Mr. to Texas. Mason. Come to Texas. I'll introduce you to 100 friends. We'll go out dancing and have some fun. <laughs> square dance time. Good night, Not square dance. I don't do square dance. <laughs> we do real couples dancing. Two-step waltz. One step waltz, nice. I could play a waltz while you Con dance. Uh, waltz. The country waltz is a—it's actually a pretty elegant dance, and it's fun. Uh, we do two step, one step waltz, um, and there's one other one, which I oh, uh, the place we go to plays some line dancing during the breaks, but that's not my—it's not my thing. Mm -hmm. Line dancing is not really super popular in Texas. That's outside of Texas. Anyhow, yes, we, we have plenty of real life friends, Good but, night. uh, but it is, you know, it's a weeknight and, uh, I don't like to drink and drive. So we, we yeah. sit here and have a beer and we got to be up early in the morning. Um, what else? Everybody in the audience, thank you tonight for tuning in, hanging out with us, asking some great questions. Uh, everybody that's a member of the channel with your uh name in bold there with a the badge pam as a mod anya as a mod thank you to all of you uh i don't do a lot of pitches this is the one five seconds where i say if you want to support the channel and the work that we do here there is a join button if you're on a desktop on youtube uh i have like a 2.99 just getting started five bucks is the uh entry level that gets you in the discord and uh, that money goes to pay for all the tools that I use to bring you this work. So if you find what I'm doing useful and you want to support it, great. If not, it's still going to be free. Still going to be here every day. I'm not trying to sell you anything. And, uh, I'll, I'll let Corax and uh, mediocre, Tell us their uh, YouTube channels or their Twitters, whatever you guys want to say, and then we'll sign off. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot to pl play the Corax intro too. By the way, <laughs> I put a lot of work in that. I'm gonna I'm gonna play yeah, that it. real quick. Do it. <laughs> I like. All right. That'll be your uh, outro for today. Yeah. Like it says down the bottom, Noisy Corax on YouTube, on Twitter. It is Sunny Corax. And uh, if you want to join us for the next XFL game, that'll be, I believe, it's it's actually Sunday this week, but we're taking on San Antonio. So you're going to live stream play-by-play -play of the XFL game, right? That's what you do US, on weekends? The UFL, yeah. Oh, UFL, okay. Yeah, UFL. The XFL and the USFL merged into the UFL. So it's one league now. So we will be covering every Battle Hawks game this weekend, 10 weeks, and if they make the playoffs. Tony is going to be kindly joining us for the Houston game, as that should be fun. We'll make a drinking game or something. Yeah, we got to have a drinking game because 
Otherwise, I'll probably be pretty boring. Um, Michael says, are any more socks or a buy which have a dip? We talk about a lot of them every day, Michael. Uh, we're out of time tonight. Uh, as far when I say we talk about them on our Discord voice chats, we're talking about plays all the time. Um, but the next good one that I have that I identify myself, uh, I posted a couple of ideas in Discord today. Uh, when I have time, look, a five minute video takes me three hours to make. Mm -hmm. I'm not joking to get all of the information. I could go Donahue George style and just turn on the camera and say whatever's on my mind. And it doesn't mean anything. I could put out 10 of those a day. No problem. But I actually put work and research and due diligence into my videos. So when I have time to, and I have a good one for you, I will put a video out. I have a long list. I just don't have a lot of time. And even when I do, you know, putting in three hours of my time for 400 people to watch it, it's not really worth it. So the, the discord audience gets it because they're supporting the channel. The rest of you, when I have time, I'll tell you about it. I'm not trying to penalize anybody. It's just like, I, I only yeah. have so many hours in the day. It's just, being real. Yep. When, when, when we all can just, you know, do YouTube as the, as the core job, then we'll pump out all the heavily edited videos, heavily researched. Yeah. If I had a whole team helping me edit and da, 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 that'd be fine. Yeah. But when it's just you, it takes time. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't, uh, that's why I hardly do it because it's just too good. So call me, a, I just, call me a grifter, Tony. And my, I'm not even monetized. I don't give it. Funny. It's it's a love of the game thing for me. Funny, I, I like doing the video editing stuff. It's kind of fun. Yeah, I enjoy it sometimes. But you know, in order to make any money at doing it, and all the time you you put in, it's, it's a lot of time. We're know? busy actually trying to make money with exactly. our screens trading during the day. I don't yeah. have time to get distracted putting out a video that no one's going to watch. You know, it sucks. Yeah, that's why most of my videos come out on the weekends. <laughs> if I do it, it's a labor of love. Trust me. Mm -hmm. All and right, gentlemen. Uh, mediocre, mediocre. Do you want to give a shout out for your channel or your Twitter? Yeah, real quick. So my YouTube's mediocre trader. Uh, my Twitter is mediocre trader one. And uh, you guys have a good night. Thank you, Tony, for having me. Corex. I'll talk to you later, buddy. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. We'll see y'all on the next one. There'll be some more coming up. Some more lives. Some more videos. And uh, go watch the one I put out tonight, please. Share it. Adam Aaron says, Chapter 11 is inconceivable. Let's go. Yeah. I'm like an addict, ooh, I gotta have it I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit If it moves, gotta grab it Fuse like a magnet, lose, won't have it Till I'm doomed in a casket I ain't playing, got a weird mind If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine If the shit tastes sour, you should taste mine I'ma stay in power for a long time Get up, nah, I ain't a quitter Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter Big picture, I'm a straight killer Rice in the song to the highest bidder Got juice, got gas, I'ma move fast New shoes, new tracks, like who's that? I'm new, come back, better than last Yeah, it's a new me, never gonna look back Never gonna look back Cause damn, I was built to last You move slow and I move fast And that's fast